Welcome back to the simulator series. In today's episode, we are going to be creating the pet leveling system. As always, if you guys do enjoy the video or it does help you out, make sure you smash the like button, also hit the subscribe button, and turn post notifications on if you want to get notified whenever I upload more Roblox development content. I also have a Patreon if you guys like to support me and gain access to all the scripts and the game file that I make during this episode. There's a link down below in the description, and you guys can go and check that out. With that being said, let's hop right into it. So, hopping directly into studio, the first thing we're going to do is go to a replicated storage. Inside of our config folder, we have the pets module script right here, and we're going to open it. Now, let's actually look at the config table that we have right here. The way that our pet leveling system is going to work is that every single pet can have a different max level set for that specific pet. Now our experience system is going to start from level 0. So at level 0, a pet is going to require 100 XP to level up to level 1. Now the way that we're going to be distributing XP to all the pets is every single time a player actually clicks in our game, that's going to give each of the pets that they have equipped one experience. Like I said, for the first level, it's going to require 100 XP to go from level 0 to level 1. Now, every single level after that, the pet's experience requirement, or how much XP they need to level up once again is going to increase by 100. So when a player is level 1 and they're going to hit level 2, they are going to require 200 experience to actually level up. Now additionally, some pets you might not want to actually be able to level up and if you want to prevent a pet from leveling up, you can actually set its max level to 0. When the max level is set at 0, the pet will not be able to level up at all and it'll stay completely the same. Additionally, when we created the pet inventory system and we created this function called get pet clicks and this actually takes into account the level of the pet and it'll multiply the pet's level by the clicks per level which by default is just one, so they'll only get one extra click per a level of the actual pet. But alternatively, inside of the config table, you can set this specific property to whatever you want. So you could even say 10. Now at level zero, our cat will have two clicks. At level one, our cat will then have 12 clicks because for the first level, it gets plus 10 and then it already has two. And then when they level up to level two, they'll have 22 clicks. So that's how our whole leveling system is going to be set up. What we're then going to do is go down to the module variable that we have right here. And right above our config variable, we're going to create a brand new variable. This is going to be called XP per level and we're going to set that equal to 100 because like I said for every single level of the pet we want to increase their experience requirement by 100. Then below this we're going to create another variable and this is actually going to be called XP per click and we're going to set that to 1. So remember how I said that XP is going to be distributed to all equipped pets of the player every single time they click? Well we're going to be using this variable when we actually set that up so that you can easily change this variable and let's say that you want to give the pets 5 XP every single time a player clicks all you have to do is change that number to 5 instead of 1. Now we're also going to create a function as well so we're going to go towards the bottom of our script and we're actually going to create this between the get equipped pets and the get total stored pets functions. So this function is going to be called get pets XP requirement and this is going to accept a pet instance. Inside of here we want to create a variable called config and that's of course going to be equal to pets.getconfig and then pass in the pet. If we're not actually able to find the config then we just want to return zero and stop the function right there. We'll then create a variable called max level that'll be equal to config.maxlevel. We'll then create a variable called level and that's going to be equal to pet.level. Now if the pets level is actually equal to the max level, then we just want to return zero and stop the function right there. And then finally, what we want to do is we want to return if the level equals zero, then we just want to return pets.xp per level. Otherwise, we want to return level times pets.xp per level, just like that. Now, what we're doing with this function is we basically want to see how much total XP it actually takes for the pet to reach its next level. In our game, pets start off with a default level of zero, and then they work their way up to level one. So most of the time, this will return level times the XP per level. But since our pets start off at level zero, zero times XP per level would just equal zero. So that's why if the pet's level is zero, then we just want to return this variable. Otherwise, we can multiply level times the XP per level. So now that we've created that function, we want to actually go over inside of the server script service and open up the pets module script. Now we also want to go inside of the replicated storage and inside of the remotes and inside of the pets folder. And inside of here, we're going to add a brand new remote event and we're going to rename this to update pet XP. And then we're going to duplicate this and rename this one to update pet level. Now that we have both of those remote events inside of there, we can go ahead and look inside of our pets module script inside of the server script service. And inside of here, we want to go towards the bottom of the scripts and we're going to create a brand new function inside of here, which is going to be called give pet XP. And this is going to accept a player. Now inside of here, we of course want to get the player's profile. That's going to be equal to to the player data that profiles index that with the player if we're unable to find the player's profile then we just want to stop the function right there then we'll create a variable for the player's equipped pets that's of course going to be equal to pets config dot get equipped pets and pass through the profile dot data then we want to actually loop through all of those pets and inside of this loop we want to create a variable called pet config that's of course going to be equal to pets config dot get config and then we want to pass through the pet instance we also want to create a variable called max level that's of course going to be equal to pet config
config.maxlevel. And we'll create a variable for the current level as well, which is going to be equal to pet.level. Then we want to check if the current level is equal to the max level of the pet. And if it is, then we want to just continue end because we don't want to give a pet who's reached their max level any further XP. After that sanity check, we can then go ahead and actually increase the pet's XP. And we're going to increase that by the pet's config.xp per click, just like that. We're then going to create a variable called next level XP requirement. And that's going to be equal to pet's config dot get pet's XP requirement. And then we're going to pass through the pet instance. Now, if the pet dot experience is greater than or equal to the next level XP requirement, then what do we want to do? Well, we actually want to reset the pet's experience to zero. And then we want to increase the pet's level. And now that we've done that, we then need to replicate that information to the client. So we're going to say update pet level. We're going to fire it to that specific player. We'll pass through the pet.uuid and the pet's brand new level. And then finally, at the end of this for loop, what we also want to do is fire the update pet XP remote. So we're going to fire client, pass through the player, pass through the pet.uuid and pass through the pet.experience as well, just like that. So what this function is going to do is we're basically going to get all the players equipped pets. We're going to go through every single one of those pets. If the pet has reached max level, then we're just going to continue through the loop. If the pet has not reached the max level, then we're going to increase his experience and then we're going to check if it can level up. And if it is able to level up, then we're going to set the experience to zero and we're going to level the pet up. So increase its level. We're going to replicate that to the client. And then every single time we call this function, we're going to update its XP. So we're going to fire that to the client as well. Then what we're going to do is go inside of the service script service and open up the click script right here. And instead of here, we're going to create a variable called pets, and that's going to be equal to require service script service dot pets, just like that. Now, towards the bottom of the script, right below where we actually adjust the player's clicks, we want to say pets, give pet XP, and then we want to pass through the player just like that. So every single time the player clicks and on the server side, we already are rewarding them with clicks. We're also going to call the pets that give pet XP function, and we're going to give each of the players equipped pets XP. Now we're pretty much done on the server side. So we're going to go over to the client side, but first, we're actually going to go inside of the replicated storage, inside of the client folder, open up the state manager right here. And of course, we want to update the state. So we're going to go towards the bottom of the script, and we're just going to copy and paste this remote event. Instead of rename pet, we're actually going to say update pet XP. And for the arguments, we're going to get the UUID, and we're going to get the amount of XP. And then with this pet, instead of updating the name, we actually want to update the experience property with the amount of XP that the pet actually has. And then we're going to copy and paste this. And now instead of update XP, we're going to go with update level. We'll rename that. Instead of indexing with experience, we'll index with level, and then we'll Set it to its current level just like that. So now that we've done one of the things we need to do on the client, let's then go inside of the starter player, inside of the starter player scripts, inside of the GUI, and open up the pets inventory local script right here. Now, remember how we just added those remote events? Let's go towards the bottom of our script and actually add those in first. We'll go ahead and copy the rename pet and replace this with update pet XP. Of course, we're going to get the UUID and the XP, which is a number. Instead of calling update pet, we're actually just going to copy and paste this. So if the selected pet is this pet right here, then we're going to call the update info function. And then since we've done that, we're also going to copy and paste this once again. Again, and instead of XP, we're going to say level. And then we can also update the arguments as well, but we're not using these arguments anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And now we're good on those remote events. What we're then going to do is go towards the top of our script where we actually have the update info function. Right below our pet variable, we want to create a new variable called XP. And of course, that's going to be equal to pet.experience. And we're going to create a variable called required XP. And that's going to be equal to pets config dot get pets XP requirement and then pass through the pet. Then right below where we set the image of the lock image label inside of our viewport frame, we're going to say info dot progress bar dot amount dot text equals. Now, if you're confused at all by what the progress bar actually is, let's go into our start GY, open up the pet inventory, and then we'll enable the info frame and we can actually see the XP bar right here. So inside of the info frame, inside of the progress bar, we have the amount text label right here. And what does this actually say? It says the amount of XP that the pet currently has slash, and then the amount of XP for the next level. So we're going to say, format number dot format compact we'll pass through the current amount of xp that the pet has then we'll say dot dot slash dot dot and then we're going to say format number dot format compact and we'll pass through the required xp just like that now another thing that we want to consider right here is that a pet can reach a maximum level and when the pet does reach its maximum level instead of displaying how much xp it requires to reach the next level we actually want to display the words maxed out now how can we tell if the pet has reached its maximum level well the required xp will actually be set to zero so if it is set to zero then what we want to do is we want to say maxed out just like that and then otherwise we're going to say else so if the pet has not reached its maximum level then we're going to display how much xp it requires to level up otherwise we'll display maxed out because the pet has been maxed out we also need to actually update the progress bar as well so info.progressbar.progress and we also want to update its size its size is going to be a udim2 dot from scale and we want to divide the amount of xp it currently has by the required xp and then we're going to say one for y because if we look at the progress label and then actually look at the size it's one by default so that's why we're saying 
saying want for the Y, just like that. And then finally, we actually want to set the visibility of the progress based upon if the XP is greater than zero. So now the reason that we're doing this is if we look at the actual progress bar, and let's just set this to something like zero. Now you can see that there's a little black line right there. And the reason that there is a little black line is because this is visible and it has a UI corner inside of it. So when we make this not visible, that black line no longer appears. And we can see that when we make it visible, it does appear once again. So if the progress is basically zero, we want this bar to not be displayed. That's why we're updating its visibility. So going back to here, we're setting the visibility based on if the experience equals zero. So if the progress equals zero, then we want to set that to not visible. Otherwise, it should be visible. And now with that being said, we can go ahead, delete out that comment, save our game and start it up and test this out. Before I test this out, I'm going to go ahead and actually set the visibility of the info frame to not visible like it was. We'll also set the screen GUI to not be enabled. And now we can go ahead and test this out. So once we get into our game, we can go ahead, open up our pet inventory, click on our pet, and we can see that this pet is level zero and has no XP. When we start clicking, we can see that the progress bar is actually moving and the number is updating as well. It might be hard to see the amount of XP that the pet has because the number is pretty small in studio, but we can see that it is definitely changing every single time we click. We can also look at our other pets as well and we can see that their XP is also changing as well. If we want to, we could even unequip one of these pets and then keep clicking with these pets and we can see that this pet's experience is something at like 45, but this one is still at 30. So we see that that one pet that we don't have equipped is not increasing. Now, after a ton of clicking, we are almost about to level up our pet. So let's go ahead and see what happens when we reach 100. And now we can see that it displays level one and the pet has been maxed out. Now, the reason that this does display maxed out is because if we look at our pet's config, we can actually see that the max level for both of our pets is currently level one. So if we keep clicking, the pet's experience no longer increases, which means that this is working perfectly. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, with that being said, that's going to be it for this episode. If you guys did enjoy, as always, make sure you smash the like button, also the subscribe button, and turn this post notifications on if you want to get notified whenever I upload more Roblox Femme content. I also have Patreon. If you guys like to support me and gain access to all the scripts and the game file that I make there, there's a link down below in the description, and you guys are going to check that out. With that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video.